As one of the last major releases for the original Xbox, Oddworld Stranger's Wrath is also one of the most memorable. It took the Oddworld series to new places with a cross between third-person platforming and first-person shooting. With its unique weapon system, open-ended mission design, and fascinating story, it's a game that still manages to feel special today. Since its release on Xbox, however, Stranger's Wrath has received numerous re-releases across platforms such as PlayStation 3, PS Vita, the PC, and mobile phones. It even received physical copies on Vita and PS3, which I couldn't resist. But it's also a game and series that has only occasionally appeared on Nintendo platforms. With the release of Stranger's Wrath on the Switch, however, we can add one more to the list. So today we're running through the original versions of the game while drawing comparisons with this new Switch port. We'll discuss the new features and see how it stacks up, so let's get started. The original Xbox was a forward-looking machine with very capable hardware for its day, and Oddworld Stranger's Wrath makes full use of the hardware. The original release offers large environments with minimal loading thanks to data streaming. The world is packed with foliage and environmental effects, not to mention reflective water surfaces which appear to use planar reflections. It's a beautiful game to behold, even now. The frame rate target is 30 frames per second, but the game manages to mostly deliver on this. Like most Xbox games, it supports 480p output, but seems locked to the 4x3 aspect ratio. It also lacks basic options for adjusting things like camera sensitivity. Still, even with these limitations, it still manages to hold up rather well. In fact, it received a lot of praise at the time, but unfortunately failed to break even. And thus, the series went silent for a few years. As the next decade approached, a new conversion appeared, or more accurately, several. For this HD remaster, the primary version was on PlayStation 3. The PS3 version received significant changes. Character and enemy models were overhauled with hugely boosted polygon counts. Detail textures were added to the mix, cutscenes refined, foliage improved, and performance bumped up to 60 frames per second. It wasn't flawless, but it was a great conversion of an excellent game. These updates eventually made their way to the PC, not to mention PS Vita, though that version only runs at 30 frames per second. The Switch version, however, has an opportunity to improve upon these features further, but that doesn't mean it's perfect. At its core, this new version of the game is based on the original HD release for PlayStation 3, but with numerous changes. As always, let's discuss the resolution first. Looking back, the original Xbox version is of course just 480p. On PlayStation 3, you get a full 720p. PS Vita is 544p. With Switch, docked mode delivers a full 1080p output, which is a nice improvement over previous console versions, while handheld mode offers the same 720p output as PlayStation 3. But it's the anti-aliasing that is perhaps more interesting. You see, the PS3 version adopted Sony's MLAA for its edge treatment. The original Xbox and Vita versions, of course, lack AA altogether. Then there's Switch, and this time there's two options, FXAA and MSAA. You can also completely disable this if you like. It should come as no surprise then that multi-sampling offers a superior image for the most part, with very clean edges throughout. But as you might anticipate, there are some drawbacks to this technique which we'll discuss shortly. FXAA is reasonably comparable to the MLAA on PS3, but due to the higher resolution, edges certainly are cleaner overall. Unfortunately, it's not perfect in terms of image quality. You see texture filtering is set to a rather low level, resulting in blurrier textures at oblique angles. I was surprised to see that the PlayStation 3 version actually uses a higher setting for texture filtering, so textures manage to retain more detail at sharp angles. The overall resolution is lower on PS3, of course, but textures just look sharper overall. This isn't the only area where PS3 has an advantage, however. While exploring the world on Switch, I noticed visible foliage pop in, basically clusters of grass appearing as you move through the world. It's slightly distracting at points, I feel, but what surprised me the most is that the PlayStation 3 version has a significant advantage here. 
Let's start here on this cliff side. Look down off to the right. You'll notice how on PlayStation 3, more grass is visible, while on Switch, it's almost completely absent. Curious, right? Well, during exploration, PS3 also exhibits less noticeable pop-in to the point where it's almost not visible at all. If I drop the speed of the video to 50% then, it becomes a little easier to see what's going on. If we jump back up to the cliffside though, take a look at this plant. You'll notice how on Switch, there are shadows being cast on the grass. This is true of other decorators as well, and this is a new feature, not available on PlayStation 3. The question here though is, why is this happening? Well, my guess is that it all comes down to bandwidth limitations, a problem common with Switch titles. The bump in resolution combined with limited bandwidth likely have a stronger impact and prompted them to pull the vegetation draw distance in on Switch. But of course, that's just my theory. Aside from the handling of foliage, however, I also determined that pre-rendered CGI movie sequences appear slightly higher quality on PlayStation 3, though it's likely difficult to tell the difference here in a YouTube video. Taken together though, those are the three key areas where the original PlayStation HD version still has an advantage. Texture filtering, foliage draw distance, and video playback. But at the same time, it's curious to think about the nature of ports like this. After all, the Switch is very much mobile hardware. And yes, there were other mobile versions of the game, but they were not on par with the Switch release. That we have an engine that originates from the original Xbox back in 2005 and has shown up on all these different platforms before arriving on Switch, I can see why, especially with a small team, the developers may have had some issues. Still, that's really the bad news here. The rest of the port is mostly equal and at a higher resolution. But there's also some excellent tweaks to the UI and gameplay that I do feel are worth mentioning here. Firstly, the UI has been updated once again, and what's interesting is that you can choose between the older HD version and the latest version of the HUD if you like. There's also more adjustable options for camera control and positioning, including the original camera option, none of which are fully available on PlayStation 3. This version also supports gyro aiming, which is an excellent addition and it feels great. It really allows for increased precision, which is key as I feel the dead zone on the analog stick, kind of like the other versions, isn't quite perfect. Another great feature for repeat players is the option to skip cutscenes. And beyond that, you can even skip the opening tutorial stage. While the world is streamed, when you do run into loading screens, the loading is also very, very fast. So. When you look at these features, there's a lot of great quality of life changes on Switch that do result in a slightly more pleasant overall experience. It's just in terms of visuals and features then, I feel it's somewhat of a wash when compared to PS3. The higher resolution and quality of life improvements are excellent, no doubt, but I feel the PlayStation 3 version looks slightly better overall. The sharper texture detail and lack of visible pop-in really help make for a more consistent looking game. If texture filtering can be improved on Switch, I think the gap will be much closer though. Still, they're close enough that it's not really a big deal, and honestly, PlayStation 3 isn't as widely used as system these days. The Switch version holds up well enough and is far and away the best way to play Stranger's Wrath on a portable system. It's much smoother than the Vita and mobile versions. And speaking of fluidity, I suppose the real test comes from performance. So, as a quick refresher, the PlayStation 3 game targets 60 frames per second and does generally manage to hold this, but it isn't perfect. I notice dips here and there during both exploration and in combat. Overall, I feel the average frame rate is very stable on PS3 and the game feels great to play, so it was a win for the developers at the time, and above your typical PS3 release as well. So, how does it compare on Switch? Well, there's really four main modes I want to test here. FXAA and MSAA in both portable and docked. So, let's start with docked performance. FXAA is the default here, and this delivers performance rather similar to PlayStation 3. The game does reach 60 frames per second most of the time, which is great, but I did note dips while moving quickly between areas in the world. The most demanding area I ran into during my tests, and keep in mind I haven't had a chance to play through the whole game yet, 
is here, while engaging the enemies in the ruins. The frame rate really took a noticeable hit. I suspect this isn't the only place with such an issue either, but thankfully, at least here, it's primarily a problem when looking upwards, so it doesn't really impact gameplay. The next area I tested then is back out in the second town you visit. This one is much larger and more complex than the first, with a lot of alpha particles moving through the air. It's really great looking. Now, running through it, you notice that there are a couple dips here and there, but by and large, the frame rate does hold steady at the expected 60 frames per second. I've sped up this clip slightly to reflect the entire run. Now, at this point, it should be clear that while the frame rate is mostly steady, it does still have dips here and there, again, like the PS3 version, but they're not a huge problem. Where things get interesting is when you turn on MSAA. Unsurprisingly, this has a massive impact on performance. The temple, for instance, takes an even greater hit. But the city test is a good indicator of what you lose. This section turns in a mostly steady 60 with FXAA, but MSAA drops the performance by a significant amount. The average frame rate does still hang in the mid 40s to 50s though, so it's not that bad, but it's not as fluid either. Even in the worst case though, the frame rate does seem to hold above 30 FPS. Thus, I kind of feel like the best solution here would have been the option to cap the frame rate at 30 FPS. Let's call it a quality mode. With this addition, we could use MSAA while pushing at foliage draw distance and enabling higher quality texture filtering while maintaining a steady frame rate. Yes, I still would prefer the 60 FPS mode, but I feel this would make MSAA a lot easier to enjoy. Just for good measure then, here's the same town running with anti-aliasing completely disabled. It doesn't seem to have much of an advantage in terms of performance over FXAA, so perhaps this is an option for folks that aren't especially fond of FXAA and the blur that it can produce, and dislike the performance hit that you get with MSAA. Either way, it's very stable, except in areas where something other than the GPU is bottlenecking the system. Then of course there's portable mode, and I decided to test the same two areas. And it's interesting, right away you'll notice some extra performance loss that was not present in docked mode. The rest of the town though is mostly stable, but that one distant view does seem to result in a performance drop. Overall though, I think it's mostly comparable to docked mode, and a huge step up from the Vita version which struggles to maintain 30 frames per second as it is, so it's still a great way to experience the game in portable mode. Of course, the temple area still exhibits the problems that I found in docked mode. There's just something about this area that really pushes the system. But as I said earlier, this is one of the slowest areas I encountered during gameplay, so it's not entirely representative of the typical experience. It is interesting, though. So at this point, there's nothing too unexpected, right? Well, then we get to MSAA, and this is where things start to change. You see, with the reduction in resolution, the Switch GPU suddenly has additional overhead necessary to utilize MSAA in a more effective manner, and the result is performance that sticks much more closely to 60 frames per second. Yes, there's definitely still dips, it doesn't run as smoothly as FXAA, but it is dramatically smoother than in docked mode. In fact, on the Switch's LCD screen, this might just be the cleanest and sharpest looking game I've ever played on Switch. The native 720p output combined with MSAA is beautiful and performance is generally quite reasonable. Of course, if we jump over to the temple area, it still runs as poorly as before, but it's clear that it's not just the MSAA that's the issue here, so it's unsurprising. Okay, so let's quickly review then. Docked mode with FXAA or no anti-aliasing is generally very stable, and it hits 60 frames per second most of the time. That's key. But there are still dips as you play the game, just like there were on PS3. I suppose the dips are not as significant as they are on PS3 though, so it's an improvement overall, I feel. MSAA has a huge impact in docked mode, however, and I don't recommend it as a result, unless a 30 FPS cap is implemented in a later patch. In portable mode, however, MSAA is much more usable and doesn't have nearly the same impact on frame rate. FXAA is still smoother, of course, but the gap is significantly reduced. So, with all that said, the Switch port is rather interesting. 
After examining the game again, it feels like every version has its own strengths and weaknesses, so there really is no definitive winner here. Even still, the Switch version is rather compelling. It's easily the best portable iteration of the game by far, with the highest frame rate and image quality. So while the PS3 version still has a few advantages, I definitely would recommend giving it a shot on Switch. Also, beyond any of the technical details that we've discussed, it's a really great game that still feels unique today. Each mission is carefully crafted with unique level designs and places to explore. The unconventional weapon system really requires you to be creative with your tools, and you're free to approach situations either straight on with lots of action or try to stealth your way through. It's possible either way. Oh, and one thing I neglected to mention earlier that I really like is the addition of a run button. In the original game, Stranger automatically goes into a full-on run while moving after a certain period of time, but it's not something you'll always want to do. This is exactly how it works on PS3 as well. With the Switch version, however, that option is still available, but by default, you need to hold the Y button to run at full speed. Yes, it has a proper run button, kind of like a Mario game, I suppose. Somehow, this just feels more natural to me. But I think that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, as always, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, stay odd.